Okay, excuse my mistake. I accidentally messed up on which path did what. I completely ignored that there was a middle path in the first place. So that is the Paragon side, which is you control the Reapers. That is the Renegade side, where you destroy all synthetic life, which includes not only the Reapers, but the mass relays and any type of technology that exists in the galaxy. The middle path, which is, I guess, neutral, is combining synthetic and organic life all at once and creating a new type of life that is both. So, which one should I choose? Which one should I choose? Side with the elusive man or Anderson or this new option? <laughs> well, I've made my decision. I am going for synthesis. Now, I am going to be uploading the other two endings up to my channel if you wish to see them. So, don't feel like you're missing out if you want to see the other two endings because those will go up as well. But, as for my actual playthrough, I would like to choose Synthesis. Just because it sounds like it's the most hopeful. The Reapers don't come back again and destroy everybody, but people still get to keep technology and things like Geth Revolts won't happen again because people are already part synthetic. And Reapers won't have any- I think Reapers- I don't know if Reapers are actually going to die if I choose this, but they won't really have a reason to come back here and kill everybody if I choose this path. So, here we go.
friends, that is the end of the Mass Effect series. Now, that excludes DLC, of course. I'm not going to do the From Ashes DLC. Uh, just because that was part of the main story and I didn't get around to that. I don't think it was really all that important anyway. I know it was a Prothean guy, but I don't think he changes anything at all really besides having him on your ship. I don't think he lets you get the Crucible any quicker or changes any of the outcomes, so that's not really a big deal. But if there is a DLC out that comes out maybe in a few months that adds some kind of extra mission to the game, then I'll probably go ahead and do that. But as far as the main story goes, that is it for Mass Effect 3. And hey, that guy is my name. Zufelt. Uh, that's, that's not my name, the first name. Anyway, um, I guess I can explain why people don't like the Mass Effect 3 ending, because I think it's okay. But the, the biggest problem here is that there's three endings, right? Well, let me put that in quotes. There's, quote, three endings that you can pick and choose from. There's the Paragon ending, where you control the Reapers. There's a renegade ep the, uh, the renegade ending, where you destroy all synthetics. And, of course, neutral ending, which you just saw, which is a hybrid where all forms of life become both organic and synthetic. Um, but the thing is, basically the difference between the three endings, as far as the actual cutscene goes, is the color of the explosion when the Mass Effects when the Mass Effect relays start exploding. That's about it. Because I have I haven't seen the Paragon ending yet, but I have seen the Renegade up. Why do I keep messing up on that word? Renegade ending. And it's basically the exact same thing as this, except the explosions were red. Joker didn't have the synthetic stuff on his his arms. And Garrison Tally came out instead of instead of Edie, who was probably still fine in the ship. But basically, Joker still crash lands on whatever the planet that was. Um, I would presume that basically all the crew is still alive. Just, I, I, I can't see why they would die. I, I know the Normandy crashed, but I'm pretty sure the whole crew lives no matter what ending you do. And I would imagine for Paragon, it's the same thing. I would guess that Joker lands on that planet. Maybe James and Liara come out, possibly. And the explosions are blue. And maybe there's Reapers in the sky or something. I'm not really sure. But I know the endings are going to be basically the same. I think that's that's the problem most people had with it. It's not that the ending itself is terrible as far as potential goes. It's more like it really doesn't... There's no variety. Especially considering all the decisions that you can make up in the previous games. So for example, you know all the big ones like killing Rex, saving Ashley or Caden... Uh, saving the Gath or killing the Gath, keeping the Collector base or destroying the Collector base, uh, more or Samara, or, uh, I don't know, just, just all the decisions that you can do. Killing the Quarian fleet or letting them live, and Morden, keeping Morden alive, or sending him off to cure the Krogan genophage, or just basically all the decisions that you can make throughout the three games really do not have a big impact. Actually, excuse me, they don't have an impact at all on the ending. So you can be the biggest screw-up. You can be the biggest screw-up in the entire series. You can still get those three endings, I'm pretty sure. So I'm not sure what the point of galactic readiness or resources are. I'm not sure what the point of me getting those to 100% were. Because I do feel like you would still be able to get these three endings here. Maybe there's like a fourth ending that happens if you don't get everything up to 100%, but I'm not really sure. I do know that most people have been complaining about the fact that it's just not... There's barely any difference between the endings. They don't talk about what happened to the races. They don't talk about how the Krogan deal with Reeve as their leader, or if you kept Rex alive, how they deal with Rex as their leader. Or if they end up dying because you didn't cure the Genophage, or if they end up attacking other races because you did. They don't talk about the Asari if they kind of grew back, if their homeworld was kind of recovered. They don't talk about the Turians, all that stuff, what happened to Garrus. They don't talk about the Quarians if they settled back on their homeworld and and started making their homes there again and were able to live without their masks and stuff. Uh, even the humans, they didn't really talk about the humans. Like, from that cutscene, you don't know what happens to the humans at, after that. I mean, you, I mean, you know they're... they're organic synthetic hybrids, but what do they do? 
Do they go and create some super robot civilization and get even crazier technology? Or do they have some kind of pseudo-natural civilization where they live in the trees in the forest, but just like little machines in the trees and stuff? They don't really talk about that, even though this is a series that's really praised for having all these little details based on what decisions you make during the game. And I can see why that's, that's a huge issue, and I, I see that as an issue as well. I personally thought the endings were alright. Uh, I know a lot of people hated them more than I did. Um, also, this music is pretty cool. I might kind of bump up the volume for this, but... Anyway, I know a lot of people hate the endings more than I do. I, I tolerate them. I just wish they had some more epilogue stuff, like what happened afterwards. Like, where did the Reapers go at this point? Because the Reapers stop attacking us, they have no point in attacking us anymore. So where did they go? Like, do they just kind of chill around space? Do they kind of visit the planets from time to time? Oh, I'm like, hey, Harbinger, how's it going? <laughs> oh, that's good. I, yeah, I'm just picking some, uh, some robot berries for my family. No big deal. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Press conference. No worries. See you later. Like, like it doesn't, it doesn't explain the relation between the organic synthetic hybrids and the reapers anymore. Like, do they just go back to the black space and live there and sleep and stuff, or, or what happens? I think that's a huge issue. And I already covered what I thought about the rest of the game in the previous, no, the set before the last one, I think. Or maybe it, it was a few sets back before we started the final mission. Is when I kind of gave my thoughts on the rest of the game. Which I do think was good, but honestly, I might I might give it a score somewhere in the sevens because of this ending. Like maybe like a seven point nine. But I just I don't know. It it wasn't really that great. I had a lot of fun with the combat. Some of the parts were frustrating, of course, but the combat was fun. But overall, I just I don't know. It wasn't that good. And it wasn't because oh, actually, excuse me, there's a cutscene still. So let me be quiet. Did that all really happen? Yes, but some of the details have been lost in time. It all happened so very long ago. When can I go to the stars? One day, my sweet. What will be there? Anything you can imagine. Our galaxy has billions of stars. Each of those stars could have many worlds. Every world could be home to a different form of life. And every life is a special story of its own. Tell me another story about the shepherd. It's getting late, but okay. One more story. <laughs> right, so that there is the last cutscene. This message really pissed me off, too. I'll read it out to you. Commander Shepard has now become a legend by ending the Reaper threat. <laughs> now you can continue to build that legend through further gameplay and downloadable content, which you're gonna have to pay for. Fuck you! Enjoy our prices, Bioware. Yay! That message kind of pissed me off, just like... <laughs> they're just flat out telling you, like, Okay, yeah, we're gonna make DLC, you're gonna have to pay for it, it's probably not gonna be that important, but... Yeah, see you later! Hope you enjoy giving us ten bucks. Now, another thing, I don't understand how Shepard's back here. I don't, like, are we, are we back before the final mission, or... Or what's going on here? What's going on? Let me open up the map. I'm not sure, like, what... I don't know if it reverted us back to the save before we went to London, or if we're just, for some reason, alive again. Because Shepard did die in our ending. No, I believe, no matter what ending you choose, he does die. Yeah, yeah, okay. This is what they were talking about before we went to London. So, this is actually before the final fight, I guess. Um, which would only make sense... Shepard did die, and he's your character, so you can't keep on playing if you if you uh, continued playing after the ending, so that would make a little more sense. But anyway, that's about it 
like I said, this probably won't be the end. I will do the DLC if they're interesting enough. If they aren't, then I might just skip it. But you, you never know. You never know. I mean, the Fallout New Vegas DLC wasn't very good, and I did that anyway. So maybe I will do it regardless. Um, probably won't pay for it, but <laughs> wink, wink. Um, but yeah, there's that. There's that. Um, yeah, so that's that's about it for the Mass Effect 3. For the Mass Effect series in general, this series has spanned three entire games. Isn't that impressive? I I would have to say 2 was the best one for me. That was the most enjoyable, I think. Just very nice. You could keep everybody alive if you so wish. The ending actually was left up to you. And there was a sense of mystery. Like, what's, what is Elusive Man going to do with the collector base? I'm curious. But now that's all over, so... I believe 2 was definitely better. I think, story-wise, 1 was also better than this. Uh, but gameplay-wise, this one was better than 1. So, yeah. I, I would give 1 and 3 about even scores, just because they're okay. They're okay, but 2 was definitely the shining star for me. But, anyway, that's about it. I'm going to go record the Paragon ending. Put that up on the channel. I'm not going to have commentary over that just for people who only want to see the endings without someone talking over them. So, yeah, uh, if you don't want to watch those, you know, fine by me. You already saw the ending to the actual playthrough, which is the one I chose here. So, yeah. Oh, as far as future plans go, of course I'm doing Penumbra right now. But I do like to have two playthroughs going at once. So what I was thinking is actually starting up the Kingdom Hearts series. If you don't know what Kingdom Hearts is, it's it's a series of games made by Disney. And I know that sounds kind of, eh, hey, why would you play a game made by Disney? It's probably like super G-rated. There's no blue, there's no blue Asari boobies, so it's got to be boring. Well, just hold on. It's actually a really good series. And it is, it is pretty childlike, especially the first one. But I honestly enjoy it. I really do, so I think it might actually be kind of fun to record. I would do 1, 2, and Birth by Sleep, if I could manage to figure out how to record that. Because I actually do have it on my PSP. Uh, as far as Kingdom Hearts 3D goes, what's it called? Dream Drop Distance, I think. I don't have a DS, so if I could, if I could get that to work on an emulator, I would be glad to record that, but I don't know if that's going to work. And this is all speculation, you know, I don't know if I'll actually do Kingdom Hearts, but that is the most, the highest um, probability in the future. So keep an eye out for Kingdom Hearts. That is a pretty long series. Probably actually take longer than this series did, which is saying something. Saying a lot. But anyway, that's about it. I've said that three times now, but this time it actually is about it. So for the last time, the King of Space Cowboys, Commander Angel Shepard, bids you adieu with his stretching and his leather jacket and his jeans and his scars. And his, his eyebrows are scratched. That's weird. Anyway, say goodbye to Shepard for what may or may not be the last time. You know, DLC. We'll see. So thank you all so much for watching this series. Thank you all who actually stuck through the whole way. I know this is a lot of videos, probably like 180 videos or so. Um, so thank you if you actually did stick through the whole thing. That's impressive. You get a medal, an internet medal. I'll put like a picture of a medal on screen or something. I don't know. But anyway, thanks so much.